name is John Watson, and I'm an international master, and this is my first chess lecture. lecture. Uh, and I uh, thank you for listening, and I'm going to talk about a variation of the French defense called the Guimard variation. So uh, without further ado, let's just see what that looks like. That's the French defense. Black is attacking the e-pawn. That sounds trivial, but there's actually very few openings in which on the second move, someone is attacking a pawn. There are probably no d-pawn openings that are like that. And in the uh, e-pawn openings, there's the Scandinavian and the Pierce. And uh, what else? Uh, very few openings actually directly attack a pawn. What that means is there has to be a reaction. Uh, the pawn on e4, the white has to do something. Either defend it, advance it, exchange it, or give it up, gambit it. So in this case, he defends it. And that's called the Tarash variation. It's always been considered a very safe uh, variation. And without much risk, and hopefully giving white a small advantage traditionally. This has been the idea. Uh, recently, I think things have changed. I think that black can get very aggressive play. I think black can get equality. Uh, and I think most top players are coming to that realization. It's still a fairly practical move for white, but it's not, uh, not at all the safe move that people used to think it was. Okay, so in our game, uh, in our variation, black plays this move. That's called the Gamard variation, and we'll talk about that for a second uh, in a second. But I want to make a point about the Tarash defense and this strange move. The main variations here are this move, attacking this, and this move, c5, attacking the center. Very logical, strong attack the center variations. Recently, we've been seeing some funny moves. Uh, the Guimard itself, we've been seeing uh, even this move. Now, that looks crazy, right? Uh, and I'd love to give a separate lecture about that, but there's no time. But it's a big move. Grandmasters are playing this. This is a slightly older move, but I think it'll come back uh, for the same reasons. And this move has been very, very popular over the last 10 years or so. Again, bringing a bishop out before the knights, doing really almost nothing, looks very odd, right? Um, so what's the point here? I think my point is that this knight on c2, in a way, doesn't stand very well. I know that sounds funny. It's really, it's really a, almost a problem piece in a way. So if black does very little, uh, it tends to uh, force white to figure out what he's going to do with that knight. I mean, if the knight goes here... There's a problem with where that knight's going to go. And uh, if the knight goes over here, it's sort of away from the action. Uh, so black can afford to make a sort of crazy move like that, and certainly a move like this. So here's the Gamard. That's this move, which, by the way, attacks a pawn. So that's the uh, second straight attacking move. And white has to defend that. But the Gamard is interesting because it, it cuts off the C pawn from attacking the center, which is a traditional idea. Uh, Nimzovich at one point called the move knight c6 in this kind of position uh, equivalent to uh, cursing in church. And uh, luckily he was a rebel, so he was actually uh, willing to curse in church. But I thought it was a, a funny statement because everyone was so intent on playing c5 in these kind of positions, especially after e5. Okay, so big digression here. That was already a digression. But let's look real quickly at the main lines. This is a problem piece. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, don't worry about following this, but I just want to show you what sort of the main lines look like, traditional main lines. There's two of them. And basically, they look something like this. Black accepts an isolated pawn. And white, at some point, goes here, attacking the bishop, and then maybe moving the knight again, at least very early in the game, maybe not quite yet. All of a sudden, this knight is in great shape. It's on a beautiful square. It's attacking. It's already gained a tempo on this piece. Well, let's face it, that knight did pretty well, didn't it? Uh, so that knight became useful. Uh, and real quickly, I know this is our digression, but let's just see this. The other main move is always in this move. And this one you might pay a little more attention to. The knight is attacked. The knight comes back. Uh, white plays, for example, this move. Black plays here, attacking the center. And that's the tra traditional way to attack the center. You don't do that in the Gamard. Uh, now you attack that square again. Uh, white defends it. Black intends to attack, uh, take a pawn, and attack in the center this way. Three pieces on that. White's going to take. Black re retakes. Don't worry about learning this by heart or anything. Now this knight goes here. Black goes here. Maybe white castles, black castles. Okay, so let's slow down here for a second. Um, in this case, this knight came from here. That's the problem knight. Well, it's not much of a problem now, sitting on this wonderful square. Uh, where it has all kinds of influence on the game. It protects uh, this pawn, which is a little bit weak, by the way. 
so the knights and the bishops, everything's doing a good job here. Uh, let me just go back for a second. Um, all white pieces are aimed at the king's side, for one thing, which is very nice. This is very, uh, it's very handy. Even this one can pop over the king's side. This one can certainly go some square like that. So white has solved the problem of this d2 knight. Let's, um, let's go back to the Gamard for a second. So what about this? Now, again, don't pay, this is just an introduction. Let's see what often happens in the Gamard. Uh, this is a, a main line. We're going to look at this today. Okay, let's just say white does the exact thing that he did in the position we just talked about. I'm going to ignore some of the lines here, but let's just, okay, this is almost the same thing we just saw, except this pawn was up here, almost the same exact position. And um, so let's just keep going, say white castles or something. And uh, black puts the bishop here just like the other time. And uh, now I'm going to make a few moves that aren't absolutely normal here, but just to make the point. Uh, let's say he wants to get rid of that piece. So maybe he, now notice he can't go here like he did last time. It certainly can't go there. Let's run it over here. Uh, maybe black castles, maybe white bastions, the center up. And here, here's the point. Now, let's say black plays this move. Just opens up the position, freeing this bishop. Uh, white plays there, black plays there. Maybe white captures. These moves are probably pretty good. Uh, okay, so you get a position like this. Um, you know, maybe white goes here and has a little bit of pressure there, so he goes here. Now, compare this, if you can remember, if you could have <laughs> held the old position in your mind where we played knight f6, that pawn had been attacked before and isolated. And here, um, the pawn is very safe. And black's got his pieces out. Well, how did that happen? That basically happened because this knight ended up going to a, a really a square that didn't help. It didn't gain any time attacking anything, and now it's quite out of play. Um, so returning again, um, okay, so that would be a Gamard variation. And let's Let's head back to show you what would really happen here. Sort of go to a, a real sort of game. That's all I digression. Um, I didn't go into much detail there, but you basically get the basic idea. Black is not attacking. Let's go back a second. Black is not attacking this pawn by c5. What he's doing is he's attacking, as you'll see. Okay, white goes here. We'll look at other moves in some other time. Black goes here, attacking this pawn again. That's three. Three pawn attacks in four moves uh, almost never happens in any chess opening. Uh, white plays a very natural move, attacking this knight and cramping the knight. Now, this kind of position, if you play the French and they've seen before, usually black tries to pile up on this pawn by attacking it and maybe bringing another piece out and attacking it again. Well, that's not possible here because the uh, cursing, knight, uh, cursing church knight <laughs> is sitting there in front of the sea pawn. So what black's really trying to do is attack from the front of the pawn chain. So let's just see that. Now, what we're going to sh show first, what we're going to look at, is the move that compares directly with the variation we saw before. Okay, here. And um, let's just go ahead at this point, and let's see a game with this. Okay, here we are following the game uh, Rosic Chernuzak. So this is a real game, Ostrava 2005, which shows some typical Gamard theory. Okay, so once again, White plays this. Uh, black plays the Gamard, that's the Gamard move, and white plays this move, protecting the D pawn. Very logical move. Uh, gets a new piece out and protects it, this pawn, and very aggressive centralizing move. Um, real quickly, if white plays this move, and maybe we'll talk about this in some other lecture, but uh, it, that's very logical. White's about to play this move. For example, if black plays here, we go into sort of a normal Tarras situation. Where that knight's going to go there, and this knight's going to go here, and actually now white solved that problem of that knight, and black's suddenly not got a very good position. But what black does here is look at this. He plays this move. Very odd-looking move. He's moved the e pawn twice, but if you think about it, what can be bad about this? He's got the same center as white. White's got a passive knight. Black has an active one. So maybe I'd say, say we might look at this again uh, at some point, but black's doing fine here. So let's go back. There we are in the Gamard and play the better move, which is this. And go back to the position we were looking at last time. Black provokes the advance of the pawn, runs back there. Uh, and again, we're going to play this move. Um, now, there are a lot of other moves here, and we'll look at those uh, in other lectures, I hope. And for example, um, one move is uh, this move, and another move is this move, and another move is this move. And another move is this move. And they're all good.
good moves, but they aren't maybe absolutely as critical as the move we play in the game because that has attacking possibilities. Now, Black, as we saw, is going to have a hard time moving his pawn. So he's going to be attacking in the center, and that's what he does. Now, all of a sudden, look at this. This is a rather strong bishop. This queen is coming out maybe with a check. This knight can move over here. Uh, so this move is a very dangerous move in some sense. So in the first game we're looking at, um, White's going to simply take that pawn, and nothing fancy. Uh, and here, Black is going to take with the queen. Now, the last little example we saw Black took with the nine, which is actually fine, and it's probably more instructive. But taking with the queen is actually my preference. Both of them are fine. This is very interesting because it puts so much pressure on e5. And so maybe Black can get that move e5 in. And if Black gets that move e5 in, his worst piece, the bishop, can come flying out. Um, so let's just see how that goes for a second. Okay. What's well, another piece on e5 there? Okay, now White wants to stop e5. White wants to answer the move e5 with c takes d5. And that's very likely the best move. Um, let me go back for a second. You might have been wondering why, uh, after this move, Black couldn't simply take this pawn. And the answer to that is just development, a little problem with development here and here. And, um, and this position you know, possibly is worth looking at for a second, just because it shows how, how tactical this position is. Now, black has two center pawns against none, so that's a big advantage. So if white has to somehow get an attack going, so he attacks that pawn. Black comes back. This has happened, actually, in a couple games. And white plays a very clever move here before black manages to just get his pieces out. White plays this move. This is fun to just look at. It's not that important for the whole lecture, but it's, it's fun. Okay, what is white threatening? Bishop here, check, followed by queen takes queen. So that means that black can't pause to take that. So black plays there, stopping bishop b5 check. But now white has this other move. It's very interesting. He probably should just take that knight, uh, and the queen would take back. But he plays this move, and this is very, very logical. Because if the king goes here, there's a fork. And if the king comes here, there's a fork. See that? This pawn is pinned, so he's about to win the queen. So really, black has to take, and in fact in one game did take, but the problem with that, of course, is he loses his queen. So it looks like White's attack is awfully good here. But in fact, Black can play check here. And this is very interesting because if White plays here, Black simply plays check with the rook and takes the queen next move. Okay? So White really can't do that. So White's going to go. Instead, White's going to move this way. So again, it looks like he's just a queen up, maybe for a couple pieces. But Black plays this move. Check. Well, there's really, he could play this, but then you just take a check again. So really, there's no other move than this. And now black comes back and attacks the queen again. This is all fun stuff. And what can the queen do except take? And then we have checkmate. Very cute little line. And it shows you how dangerous, actually, how good black's position can be with two center pawns. Now, in fact, this position is uh, too, let me go back here. A little bit too risky to take this pawn anyway, uh, just because white doesn't have to play that way. White doesn't have to be so fancy. White can just develop very quickly. So instead, black plays here as, as planned. White plays here, attacking the center, as we talked about. Black castles, the idea is pressure down here. Uh, white plays that. We could talk about other moves, but I think, I think you'll see there isn't much of another plan at this point. Um, now that attacks the bishop, which now has to retreat. Okay, and white plays, just a second, white moves the knight. Now, see the knight's off center on the queen side. It's still a good move, but at least you're not getting uh, kicked around on the king side, which is the big danger when you open up your position like this, you know, with moves like this. So the knight, the knight on d2 already has been a little bit of a problem, you could argue. Okay, um, now white's got the idea of playing here, so black simply stops that. It's not always that great an idea, but he stops it anyway. Um, White just continues developing, and look what? Look at this. We caught it again. And that's the move you're really looking for because that frees the bishop and attacks in the center. And that means black's probably got equality if he can get away with that. So takes, uh, excuse me, which way does he take? There. White takes it. Black takes. Now, again, there's no real pressure here as there was before when these pawns were gone. Because then that was an isolated pawn, but now we still got that. We can just protect it. 
So this move can, he can just make that move. Okay, in the meantime, White's got a move. Doesn't want his good bishop to be taken. So he retreats, and there he goes. Uh, that pawn was attacked, simply defended. Now this is all rock solid. So you see the strengths of the Gemard is that pawn hasn't, ex hasn't gone too far, hasn't overextended to expose this pawn. Okay, White makes good logical moves. White plays very well in this game. These are top players. Black wants to get a little bit of pressure, maybe play this move and win a little material down here um, because this bishop can't come up to defend it because there's a rook and a knight on it. So um, White plays that instead. Very logical, attacks the queen, drives it away. White plays with c3. One of the ideas is to zoom over here now, maybe even attack. Good move on the third rank. Black develops a piece to a very strong square, covering uh, you know, a lot of nice squares here. And white centralizes. So finally that knight, which went here and here, has done a good job. But the problem is uh, it's rather late, and black's been able to get that movie five in and get his pieces out. So even though the knight is now useful, uh, it's not that exciting. Okay, black tries to exchange off that bishop, which is causing him some discomfort, and he develops his last piece right under an open file, allowing white to play this move. Now, that's a very, very nice piece, but after this move, it's not really threatening very much. So if you look at this, black has every, all these rooks on open files, and the bishops are all free, and the knight is centralized. And it's at the cost of this one knight uh, being on a good square, but that knight's not doing too much, and in fact, it retreats now. Uh, just because black was probably going to attack it anyway. Now, now he's aiming for a very good bishop. He'd like to get rid of that, so black moves away from it, and white comes back to that square. And you can see this is uh, this is a valuable kind of idea, um, and that bishop's very well placed there in conjunction with this knight. But black is able to block it at least. Now the problem is this is a little weak, and black makes a little reorganization. First, he puts his bishop on a very nice long diagonal and directly attacking the. Uh, the rook, so white stops that. White, black comes back, a very nice move, still sort of indirectly attacking that bishop. This queen has not stopped moving yet. Uh, white attacks that twice. Now, of course, these, this game is much more complicated than this, but I'm just showing you the basic contours of what happens in this game. That turns out to be a bit of a mistake, and you'll, you'll see why that is. Black plays this move. Now, this queen has been pretty funny. It's gone, uh, let me see, it's gone... What was it? There, there. No, actually, it's F6, but same difference. It's made a lot of moves. There, and now there. <laughs> so, it, but every time it's had some sort of purpose, and here it's got a very good purpose because let me just go back and get rid of some of those arrows. Um, here it's got a very good purpose because it attacks a pawn, and a very critical pawn, because if it can take that pawn, this center is very strong. Unfortunately for, for uh, white, it's also attacking a rook. And then that would attack the knight at the same time, so black would win material. So because this bishop h4 move is so strong, uh, white is going to have to give up this pawn instead. And so uh, white simply retreats. The knight that was attacked twice indirectly, uh, black takes, white takes, black takes. Uh, and, well, he's a pawn up now. And the position is looking very strong because all the pieces are centralized. He has pressure down the F file. Uh, this is just very hard to defend. And uh, white plays there, hoping for some sort of cheapos here. And black takes, and all of a sudden white resigns. And if you just look for a second, you can see why he resigns because if, uh, let's see, there's another move. That's the end of the game. Um, if white retakes, he's a piece down and a pawn after all. And black simply takes the bishop. And he's a piece ahead because if white takes either way back, black plays check, force, move there, check, force, move, checkmate. So a very pretty game. Nice little game. But it showed you basically how black frees his game and how the knight in there can be an advantage over having the pawn up, up here. Of course, the main line with the pawn, either way, you can play it either way, but this is the Gamar, and this is one interesting way to play. Okay, let's take a look at another game. Okay, now we'll look at a game called Ritich Elbilia, French Teams Championship 1997, a little older this time, and it's another game of this move, Bishop D3, which certainly isn't the only move, but it's very critical. But let's take a quick look at this. Okay, there's our key Gamard move again, attacking this, blocking the C-pawn, but putting pressure on that square. By the way, I didn't mention this, this opening, the Gamard has always been considered a little bit weak, uh, 
top players really haven't played it until recently. It's always been there. It's always been analyzed, but it's always been considered a little bit second rate, and I think that's not true anymore. Very interesting little opening. Um, Black does the same thing he did before. All these moves are logical, and Black really doesn't quite have as much choice as White. Now, White has the big choice here. Remember, I talked about this. Bishop b5, knight b3, bishop b2. But we're interested in this very critical move first, because if this works, forget about the Gamard, basically. And again, that very risky move, a new move for White this time. Here's something different. He's just trying to exploit the fact that Black's pieces are very cramped, and his king side's a little open. Really fun move. Okay, so what does this threaten? Well, it threatens this, doesn't it? Check. And then if black plays up with a pawn, white simply takes it. So we're almost in a checkmating position here. Very strong threat. So black, it's interesting what black does here. He could simply take the knight. But then after check, now black can either play g6 or king up. Let's try king up first. Now white's a pawn down, but if you look at this position, he's threatening this move. Bishop takes, winning the queen. And uh, if black plays some move like this, he plays bishop takes anyway. And he's got most of his material back, and the king's stuck in the center. You can imagine that black doesn't want to play this way. Um, let's go back for a second. So what black does instead is very clever. He clears some room for his king. Now, white's check would be pointless now because black would just play g6. Let's take a quick look at that. If he, if he plays there, black plays g6, and this is covered now. So there's no clever little move bishop takes g6 because black takes back. Okay. So white needs to do something else. Well, the natural thing to do is for him to go a piece ahead. He's ahead for one pawn. But then black's point here now is, okay, I'll take this piece now. And white plays uh, check, as expected. And this time black sneaks over here. And that's kind of the point. Very, very safe, actually. If you look at all these pawns, he might even move this way pretty soon. But these pawns are very solid. Very hard to get to that king. If a queen ever comes here with check, there's three pieces that can get in, in front. So there's no real danger there. Um, and let's just go ahead and see how that goes. Oh, my fault. My fault. Excuse me. Uh, let me revert there. Black actually plays this move first, and you'll see why in a second. White plays the move we talked about. Bishop takes check. And if black now takes, white's going to win this rook. A lot of material, very strong position, and white's going to have a great game. But that isn't black's idea. Black's idea, let's even go back one move so you can see what really happened here. What happened was check, and instead of playing king d7, he first played this move. White took the pawn with check. So that's one pawn that black gave up, but now he has even more safety. And there's other things going on, too. White plays this move. Now, that's a, that's a very, very strong move. That's a great move, partly because white's in a bit of trouble here. It's actually not, not really the, the position that white was looking for, because he doesn't have very good development, and black is very safe, and he's starting to counterattack. So you might ask, well, what's the point of this move? Well, it's to open up some lines against the king, and uh, also to protect this. So it's got a double feature. But you'll see in a second, obviously, black can take that pawn, and we'll look at that. That's what he does. But why not a move like this? You know, a very, very nice, attractive move. It attacks the pawn, and guess what? It protects the important pawn here. It even protects the d4 square. How can this be a bad move? Well, it turns out that black can take this bishop now, finally. I guess you see this coming. White takes the rook, and whoops. Unbelievably enough... White goes somewhere, white loses his queen. This has happened in a Grandmaster game, amazingly enough. And it shows how these things are a little tricky. These things can happen to anybody, uh, especially when you're on the clock and try not to get too far behind in the opening moves. Um, okay, so let's go back. Uh, white doesn't fall for uh, the move knight f3 takes, takes bishop b4 check. He just said doesn't fall for that. He plays this cute little move, defending this. And uh, getting some pieces out, and you'll see that in a second. Uh, black plays this move. White plays this move. And uh, he stands very solidly now. You know, the queen now defends his pawn. So this game is it's sort of interesting. Very good move by black. The idea is white plays that, another good move. The idea is that if he had played queen takes queen here, uh, and black had taken back, again, a very nice pawn structure for black because this pawn is weak. Not only that, black's a pawn ahead for the moment. So I don't know if it's worth Yeah, let's take a little look at a second, for a second here. White, for example, might play uh, here so that the bishop can take this pawn, uh, giving him at least a reasonable-looking position. Black might just very dully defend that pawn. After all, black's a pawn up, and it's an end game, or close to an end game. And so that's very, um, 
that means flight really has to worry about how to, how to get that pawn back. So, let me just see here for a second. Okay, um, white might play here now. The idea is that this pawn is pinned because white's going to take that bishop. Uh, so white's going to get his pawn back. Uh, so at first it looks like white might have a fairly solid position, but um, black can play this move now, a move that's kind of been in the air anyway. It attacks that good bishop. If you can get rid of that bishop, you have the bishop pair left. Uh, and if the bishop moves back, you have knight takes c2, winning everything. So it forces that bishop to disappear. Okay, so in the meantime, at least white gets his pawn back. But look at this position for a second. Oh, let me um, yeah. take this. All of a sudden, black plays a move like this. That's a backward pawn. And he's going to be a pawn ahead again. And not only that, but he's got a, he's got a very nice, that kind of breaks up the whole position for white. And black can simply move over to the queen side, get these pieces out, start pushing these pawns. So he'll be a pawn up. I mean, that's probably the bottom line is he's a pawn up, and that's what really counts there. Let's go back to where we were. Oh, that was a long digression. Okay, so we now want to go back to the game. Oh, he plays that move instead of taking the queens off uh, because of the reason we just saw. He wants to keep things on the board. He gets his pawn back. Finally, white is equal, equal in material, but you see black's gaining a lot of time pretty quickly. Uh, pinning this knight because that knight's had direct influence on winning that pawn. If black can win that pawn, he's got two unopposed center pawns and even another pawn to, to support them, that's going to be awful. So white really doesn't want that to happen, and guess what? Black attacks it again. This is trouble. White's got to do something quickly. He defends the pawn, and black plays a funny move now. I mean, I could show you alternatives, but uh, and there are some good alternatives, but this is very clever. Um, so at this point, uh, white could play this, but look what would happen. Black would take this, even a sacrifice, because after the rook moves somewhere, the rook's attacked, Black plays check, and in this case, it's going to be checkmate. This bishop is pinned. The next move is queen takes bishop, which is checkmate. But even if it wasn't checkmate, there would be plenty of material. There'd be, uh, uh, black would be way ahead materially. So let's go back to the game. So white has to then play this move. Now black does, which is very, very common in modern chess all the time. He gives up the exchange. That's a rook for a knight or a rook for a bishop. And he already gets a pawn for it. Topolov, in a recent tournament that he tied for first after winning the World Championship, uh, gave up. Well, he's, he's constantly giving up the exchange. And it, it often means a pawn and a piece for a rook. When there are a lot of pieces left on the board, uh, it's very often enough. Uh, in this case, there's some weak pawns left. This is going to be a weak pawn. So let's just see what happens. Uh, white attacks. He doesn't want his rook to be taken. Uh, takes the queen, the queen wins a piece, black has to win his piece back, he's way down material. Okay, now he's just slightly up material. He's got a rook for a piece and a pawn. As I say, not always considered up material anymore. At this point, black checked. White played here, black checked, uh, hitting the rook. White played here, and the game was drawn. There's a few more variations. If, black, if white doesn't play this way, he's lost, but this is, uh, this is fine. Uh, it's a draw, the game was drawn. Someone might have been in time trouble, or maybe Black just didn't trust his position. But here, uh, Black has only the exchange down. He has a pawn for it, and everything's loose. So you can suspect that Black's probably winning this position if he plays carefully. Well, it takes a kind of a subtle move. At least this is the only one I found that's really good, which is that move, which pins this pawn. So that pawn can't attack. It attacks this pawn. Now we're attacking a pawn with check. That'll give us two pawns for the exchange. Beautiful center pawns. Uh, so this is, uh, and if White plays something like this, he's just losing time, and all of these pawns are going to start falling, and the king's still going to be chased around. So what would White do in this position? I think probably bring the queen back somewhere, maybe there. I'll show you why in a second. Black plays check, and I'll, remember, he's already got enough material. He's already done that, but at least Black gets his queen back in play just a little bit. And um, that's uh, a possibility. Well, Black's going to win this pawn, too, so actually this is not going to be a very attractive position. Um, let see if I can show you anything else that might go on here. Well, let me revert for a second. Okay. Um, there we go. That's the move I was talking about. Oh, that's right. Okay, so Black can take this immediately. Now, Black has material equality, a beautifully centralized knight, a uh, very active queen, and White has weaknesses and an exposed king. So you can imagine that... Uh, this comes just a little exposed, but it will get out. So you can imagine that um, 
Okay. So what, what happens there is White's trying to protect. This is, remember, none of this is played. This is showing you what could have happened and why Black's so much better. Black was threatening to play this sort of check, and then if nothing else, take that pawn. So White protects it. Uh, and now Black tries to get another piece out, his last piece, with tempo. Uh, that would be an excellent thing to do. White attacks the queen. The queen gives check. Uh, bishop interposes. Check again. He could have just taken that pawn, but this is better. The queen comes to interpose, finally trying to get those queens off. But then look what happens. The bishop is, is the rook is attacked. This knight has beautiful checkmating kind of squares to come to. So White has to take the queen off. Black takes back. White gets out of that horrible position. Black plays there. And this is simply winning for Black. This is tremendous. He's got, first of all, he wins material because the bishop is attacking the rook. And if the rook moves anywhere, the knight comes. Let's just try that move. Rook here. The knight comes here, and guess what? This beast is falling. So white would have to take something back, and all of a sudden, uh, white's a bunch of pawns behind, and, black, and his king's still exposed, and uh, black's simply going to win this game. So that's really about all you need to know. The game was drawn, but black was better, and all the way through, black made thematic and interesting moves. And if there is a next time that I come into these lectures, we'll show you some more positional moves instead of bishop d3, some things that are... Not quite as radical as this, but I hope you enjoyed the lecture, and thank you very much.